Hey y'all, in this video, we're going to get into something that I've had a lot of requests for here lately, and that is the subject of the keyhole bit. A lot of folks have been asking, how do I enter it into my tool database? How do I calculate a tool path for it? And how is it used? Well, I'm going to cover that, all three of those things, in this video. We'll go inside and get on vCarve. We'll put the tool into the database. We'll create some geometry for the keyhole bit to follow. We'll calculate a tool path. We'll save G-code. Then we'll come back out here and I'll show you how to use that keyhole bit on the CNC machine as I cut a keyhole in a piece of scrap material. Now, let me say right up front here that I am neither endorsed nor sponsored by Vectric Limited or any other software company, tool company, or anything else for that matter. I'm just doing this series of videos to help folks who have never done this kind of thing before get in, learn how to design and finish a project in the software and hopefully give you some insight as to how that translates back out here on the machine. So let's go ahead and get going. Let's go inside and get on the computer and we'll get this tool entered and get some uh, G code saved. So let's go ahead and get started by adding a keyhole bit to our tool database. In this case, I'm using a Bosch model 85608M keyhole bit, but the same procedure would work for any keyhole bit that you get. And I'll put a link in the description box below to this bit as well as a couple of others. Now, a few things that we need to know about this bit we can see by the diagram and the tech sheet from the Bosch website. And we'll need to know our major diameter here, A, and that diameter is 3 eighths of an inch. Now, it doesn't reference it in this diagram, but this small diameter here, A2, is 3 sixteenths of an inch. That's this diameter right here. That's how wide of a slot up here on top this bit is going to cut. This diameter is the one that we're interested in. We're also interested in B the cutting length, because the cutter has an edge up here, steps back in the edge here, and it stops. We need to know this dimension here, and in this case, it's 7 sixteenths of an inch. Now, I'm not going to be cutting near that deep, but we do need to know that to keep from plunging the bit too deep and trying to cut up here where there is no cutter. So we need to know that our plunge depth, our pass depth, our cutting depth can be no more than 7 sixteenths of an inch on this particular bit. And that's the major information that we need about this bit. So back over here in our software, in order to get into the tool database, we'll have to open a file or create a file, it doesn't matter either one, but there has to be a file open down here so we can access our database. I'll go ahead and I'll make this uh, just accept whatever is here because we're not really going to use it. To access the database we'll go up here to tool paths and then come down here to tool database. There is no preset, predetermined keyhole bit here for us to copy. Now, if you look down here in Specialist, I already have a keyhole bit entered. I'm going to go ahead and enter another one. I can delete the uh, duplicate a little bit later. But I'll go ahead and enter another one just to show you how I did it. The easiest way to enter a new bit is find something similar and copy it. And this keyhole bit is similar enough to an end mill, a standard end mill, that that's what I'm going to do. 
So I'll go ahead and select a quarter inch end mill and then I'll click copy. Now you can see we've got two quarter inch end mills now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to change the name. I'll change this to key hole bit and I'll change the measurement to 0.375 since if you remember our major diameter here A is 3 eighths of an inch. And I will put in the name, the model number, and any important information that I think needs to go into my notes here. Because a different keyhole bit may have different criteria, I'm going to go ahead and enter the brand and the model number. From here, if we go back over to our text sheet, our cutting edge length is 7 sixteenths of an inch. I'm not comfortable with it trying to cut that much. That gets it too close to this corner here. I'm going to back off of that a little bit and I'm going to make the cutting depth on this, the max cutting depth, 1130 seconds. Okay, and we'll enter that down here in our pass depth. But I want to make sure that I remember that up here. So I'll put down 11 30 second inch cutting depth. Okay, so those are the notes that I'm going to keep. Now the geometry of the bit, it is 0.375 diameter. I'm going to make my pass depth 11 30 seconds of an inch. It's going to be, it has to plunge down and cut the full depth of that keyhole all at once. So I'm going to make my cut, my pass depth 11 30 seconds. And I'll do that by entering 11 over 32. Then tap the equals button. And there is my pass depth. That's my decimal equivalent of 11 30 seconds. For my step over, you don't step over with a keyhole bit. I'm just going to leave it alone. I'm not going to bother with it. However, because I'm plunging and cutting so deep all in one move, I'm going to back down my feed rate to 20 and my plunge rate to half of that, which is 10. Now, this may seem to be extremely slow. But remember, we're not going to be cutting very much material with a keyhole bit. It's not going to be running for more than a few seconds. 20 inches per minute, if it even gets up to 20 inches per minute during the cut, I'll be happy. Now I'll go ahead and I'll click Apply. And we see our name got changed here. Now I'll select our new keyhole bit. Then I'm just going to click and drag and move it down here into specialist and there's our new keyhole bit right there click apply once again just so that it stays now we can click OK and now if we were to go back into our tool path tool database rather and look down under specialist there's our keyhole bit right there. That's how you enter, that's how I enter, a keyhole bit in the tool database in any of the Vectric titles. With our keyhole bit entered into the tool database, we can now create a tool path to use that keyhole bit. Now, I created a tool path for a vertical keyhole, saved it on my computer, generated the G code, saved that, and put it outside on the computer on the CNC.
And now anytime I need to make a keyhole, I can just load up that G code, set my X, Y, and Z zero, cut a keyhole, and I'm all finished. So what I need to do to create a toolpath for that keyhole is I need to create some geometry for the bit to follow. So to do that, I'm going to get back up here into job setup. Uh, again, I had just accepted everything as it was, but I don't need to set this up for a 12 inch by 12 inch piece. I'm going to go ahead and set this to a 2 inch by 2 inch piece. Thickness of my material, I'm going to leave it at 3 quarters of an inch, and I'm going to keep it my XY datum in the center. So we'll go ahead and accept that. Now I need to create some geometry for the keyhole bit to follow. The easiest way to do that is to come up here and draw a rectangle. Now I want to anchor that rectangle on X0, Y0. I want the center of that rectangle to be there. So I'll change that to Y0, and that's already X0. I want a square rectangle. I want the width of that rectangle. It's going to be very small. I want the width of that rectangle to be about 10 thousandths of an inch. So we'll go 0 0.010. And I'll go ahead and I'll make the height of that rectangle three quarters of an inch. So let's go ahead and create it. Then we'll close that. There's my rectangle there, and it's centered on my x0, y0. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and just move this up. I want the bottom edge of this rectangle to be centered on my x0, y0. So I'll go ahead and just drag that up, straight up, until this bottom end is parked right on the x0, y0 line. Then I can click off. So now we have a little bit of geometry, but I need to make a modification. I don't want that keyhole bit to follow this rectangle completely. I just want a U-shaped vector for that keyhole bit to follow. So I'll get rid of this span of the rectangle. And I'll do that by clicking on it, then typing the letter N on my keyboard to go into node editing mode. Now we can see here we have a point or node here and a point or node here. The green point indicates that's the start point. The bit will come from x0, y0 over to this point, plunge down, and start moving. What I want to do is get rid of this span right here. And if you look at my cursor pointer, when I get up to a vector that I can do something with, that little tilde forms right underneath it. When I've got that tilde, I'm going to right click, come down here, and click Delete Span. That's all I needed to do for that. Now, the start point jumped over to here. That's fine. It doesn't matter if your start point is on the right or on the left. Now, let me back out of here. I'll right click twice to get out of node editing. And we have our geometry that we need for a keyhole. Now, why did I do this and not just draw a single straight line vector for the bit to follow? The reason is because we need for the keyhole bit to plunge down, move upwards in this case, stop, then come back at the full depth, then lift up out of the material back here at the start point. If I were to do just a straight line with a vector here, a straight vector line, it would plunge in, cut all the way down here, 
then lift up out of the material here, and which is pretty useless for a keyhole slot for hanging a, uh, a picture or a sign or something. So we need it to move up to the end of the keyhole, then come back. This is why I made this so thin. This is why this is only ten thousandths of an inch. So now what I can do is I can select that vector and we're ready to calculate the toolpath. I'll go over here to my toolpaths tab. We'll do a profile toolpath. Now I've already done one of these just to show you and to use the bit we just created. I'll select that keyhole bit. It's going to plunge 0.3438. That's going to be the cutting depth I use. 0.3438. I'll click OK. We'll change our cut depth point three four three eight I want it to machine on the vector everything else can stay as it is I'll come down here and I'll change the name to point seven five long vertical keyhole then I'll calculate that toolpath. Now we can, let me change my material color just so you can see what we have here. And I'm not going to change the toolpath color because it would be a little bit too difficult to see. Now if we zoom in here real close, we can see we have a plunge move. This is our X0, uh, Y0. It's going to do a rapid move from X0, Y0, plunge down into the material, move up this direction, scoot over, come back down, then lift out of the material here. Let's go back to a straight Z view here, and we'll preview that toolpath. But you see it'll get up to the top of its travel, then scoot over. What you're looking at here is the representation of the large diameter cutter. If we were using a 3 8 end mill, that's what it would look like. We have to kind of cheat the system here because the software will not preview anything that creates an undercut. So by cheating the system and telling it that it's just a standard end mill, that's how it's going to represent the cut. But when we get outside onto the CNC and mount some material, our bit will come down, plunge in, move up, come back, then lift out of the material. That's our toolpath sorted. I'll go ahead, reset the preview, close this, and now I'm ready to save this G-code. I'll go ahead and save the toolpath. Let me put it in this one here. I'm going to leave this name 0.75 long vertical keyhole. Save that. Now, if I come in and I find that file, double click it, there is our G code. So now I'm ready to take this G code outside, mount a piece of material, set my X, Y, and Z zero, and cut this keyhole. So let's go outside and I'll demonstrate that.
Okay, before I even mount the bit in the router, we need to do a little bit of layout here on my piece of material. Now, the first thing you'll notice is I have it screwed down onto the table. That's because we're going to plunge down into the material 1130 seconds, almost not quite three eighths of an inch, then move vertically and Y, then come back. This has got to be firmly mounted on the table. Screws, clamps, blocks and wedges, whatever you got to do, it's got to be firmly attached to the table because that's going to put a lot of stress on there. Speaking of 1130 seconds, some of you are wondering, I'm sure, why I set the plunge of this bit to go 1130 seconds. Well, that is simply because I use this predominantly in three quarter inch thick material. And half of the thickness of this material would be three eighths of an inch. Now, what I'm trying to do is get the keyhole to be as deep as I can into the material without running the risk of keyholing into a carving on the other side of this material. Because remember, we still have something that we've V-carved or cut out, uh, 3D modeled on the other side of this material. Now on three quarter inch material, cutting three eighths of an inch into it uh, when you're V-carving or carving something out is not super common, but it does happen. If this were half inch material, cutting that, that would only leave me an eighth of an inch if I had this bit going three eighths of an inch deep. It's very common to cut three eighths of an inch, or excuse me, it's very common to cut an eighth of an inch into the front side of material when you're V carving or carving a model or some, or pocketing or something of that nature. So that's something that's going to have to be played with in trial and error. Uh, we know from looking at the tech sheet on this bit that I have 7 sixteenths from here to the edge of this cutter right here. This cutter right here. So 3 eighths would give me about a sixteenth of an inch to play with. The adding that extra 30 second keeps this from plunging through into my carving, but still keeps enough of this bit this cutting edge exposed out here to give me a clean cut. So that's why I went with 1130 seconds to try to avoid cutting a keyhole into a carving up in this area, but yet still plunge deep enough to give me a good effective keyhole that isn't going to split out the first time somebody hangs it up on the wall. So again, before we even put it in the router, we're going to do a little bit of layout. I need to find the center of my material in X and then place my keyhole location in Y. Now you can see I already did this little technical issue with uh, the camera and my audio. So I'll do it again here. <laughs> and I know this is an odd sized piece of uh, what this is, is this is MDF core plywood. It's basically nothing more than a sheet of MDF with an oak veneer on either side. It's a scrap piece that I had kicking around. It's perfect for this demonstration. I know this is an oddball size, not quite eight inches wide. My center is going to be somewhere around three and 29, 30 seconds. So I'll go ahead and mark three and 29, whoops, three and 29 bring over my square and we'll draw my center line down here like so. Now we're cutting a three quarter inch long keyhole slot, which to be honest is pretty big. I want to keep the top of that keyhole slot about an inch down from the edge if I can. I want to go no closer than three quarter inch. So I'll just come down here on that center line and I'll mark an inch. That's going to be the top of the keyhole slot. Then I'll come down here to an inch and three quarter because three quarter is the length of the keyhole slot and make a tick. 
come over with the square. There's my x0, y0, z0. That point right there. So now I'll mount the bit in the router, bring it over, we'll zero Mach 3, and uh, get started cutting. Okay, now the sharper right among you will notice that I have a 1 8 inch end mill chucked in my router right now. And that's just simply because a smaller diameter bit is easier to line up on a line like so when I'm visually setting my X, Y, and Z zero. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this bit down a bit just to get it close. And now I'm moving it over until the center of that bit is on my vertical line here for my x-axis. Then I'm going to come over here to Mach 3 and set my x to 0. Now the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move my gantry down here to where it's right over my horizontal line here, and I'll go over in Mach 3 and set my Y0. Now I need to go ahead and take that 1 8 inch bit out and put in my keyhole bit. Okay, those of you who know me know that I love to use my uh, touch plate, and I'll go ahead and use the touch plate to set my Z0 now. Okay, now we're ready to go. If you don't use a touch plate to set your Z0, that's fine. Whichever method you choose will work fine. I know some people like to put the piece of paper down over the uh, zero point, bring their Z down, and use the paper to touch off. I just have the touch plate, so I'm going to use it. And we're all set and ready to go. Now I need to put on my PPE, and we'll go ahead and cut this keyhole slot right here. And that's all it takes. Move my gantry out of the way. And we have a nice clean keyhole. Eleven thirty seconds deep, three quarter inch long. A little bit of fuzzy right there, but such is the nature of oak little sanding, we're ready to go. And there we have a nice clean keyhole, cut 11 30 seconds inch deep, that I can take a round head wood screw, and it slips in just fine. Of course, a countersunk would be a piece of cake but that's going to hang this project just fine. So that's it. That's really all there is to putting a keyhole bit into action, cutting a nice keyhole on the back of your project. Again, just be mindful of the thickness of your material and your depth of cut, especially if you're using anything other than uh, three quarter inch. The half inch thick material would probably be the minimum thickness I would trust with a keyhole bit. So I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button down below. I really do appreciate it. And if you'd like to follow along with uh, my further adventures with my Gatton CNC, or in learning something new in the Vectric software, hit that subscribe button down below. And while you're hitting that subscribe button, hit that little bell right next to it. Then you'll be notified the next time I post a video. 
Now, if you have any questions or comments, concerns, please leave them down below in the comment section. I do check them out. If you'd rather not leave a public comment, head on over to my website, marklindsaycnc.com, and hit that Contact Us link. Now, I read every message I get through the Contact Us link there at marklindsaycnc.com, and I do my best to answer every single one of them. So before I close this video, I'd like to say thank you to my new subscribers. Welcome aboard, and I hope you find something here that's helpful and useful to you. And once again, I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. Y'all take care.